I recently purchased the cheapest Mac Mini that I could find on eBay. It was purchasable as is, no specs listed, and said it had a boot chime but was untested. Basically, it was a series of red flags so I had to buy it. The whole thing after shipping was about $50. Just by the photos alone, I knew it was a Mac Mini 2010 as it's a unibody design with an optical drive, a design that lasted exactly one year. This narrowed down its potential quite a bit. A few days later, it arrived. The condition of the machine is only okay. There's some scuffs on it, and the feet on the bottom were really haphazardly replaced. Look at this. Who does this? I'm not a person with any sort of OCD tendencies, but even this pisses me off. Why are two of them in the correct location and two aren't? <laughs> Alright, moving on. Popping this open and it's surprisingly only semi-dusty, but it's apparent someone has been here before me. Apple did ship these with only 2GB of RAM and it is usually Hynix, at least from my anecdotal observations, which don't mean a lot. What's weird about this is the two dims aren't even the same color. If I had to guess, this was upgraded then downgraded. These Mac Minis are only somewhat upgradable because the CPU is bolted down. It can be upgraded to 16GB of RAM, and both the hard drive and optical drive can be replaced. I think all of us, though, would jump for joy if we had this level of upgradability in a modern Mac. The 2010 skinny Mac Mini is the first year of the unibody redesign, and it's the same basic form factor that we've had for 14 years now, with the only major exterior changes being in 2011, removing the optical drive from all models, some various port changes, as well as the introduction of Space Gray. If only Apple had kept this mentality with the Mac Pro, we could have had 14 years of cheese graters. Oh well. But by the time you watch this, we might have a new, smaller, redesigned Mac Mini. The seller also did not include a power cable, so already this isn't the strongest of buys, but let's see if it actually works. Fortunately, the power cable uses the C7 standard, so they're pretty easy to come by. After plugging it in, it booted to Snow Leopard of all things without a password. So far, this is a good start. The machine itself is pretty basic, only 2GB of RAM and a 2.4GHz Core 2 Duo P8600. This is the bottom tier model, not that it matters much because it only went to 2.6GHz and there was a server model shipping without an optical drive. Oh, and the hard drive is only 320GB. It's not too surprising when machines like this aren't completely wiped. I'm not really into digging into other people's stuff, but there's one thing that's truly odd. A 80 gigabyte nearly empty DMG of an old user profile that's primarily old downloads. I'm happy to report that someone was competent enough to delete the personal data because judging by the amount of copies of Flash downloaded, I'm guessing the user wasn't very technically savvy. I'll be clean formatting this drive in a minute. A quick scan on eBay reveals it's about $25 to $30 for 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's just far too much money for a $50 Mac Mini. However, on AliExpress, it's only $3.70 to upgrade this Mac Mini to 16GB. The only downside is I won't get this for about a month. In the meantime, I'm going to do something incredibly stupid. I'm going to try and run macOS Sonoma with only 2GB of RAM and a spinny disk hard drive. This machine is a poor choice for modern macOS as it only has a GeForce 320M, which doesn't have metal drivers. The graphics API used by modern macOS, which will lead to some general weirdness. Also, the CPU is pretty tragic as the iPhone 6S is about 1.5 times faster. Lastly, it has a legacy UHCI OHCI USB chipset, which means for some USB USB 1.1 devices, you'll need a USB 2.0 hub, just like this generic one I'm holding here from Belkin, and then you just plug in your USB 1.1 device, like this keyboard, and it'll work during the installation process. Post-install, you just run the OpenCore Legacy patcher again, post-install patches, and you'll get USB 1.1 device support. I hope that made sense because it just allows you to do this instead of using the hub in between. I don't know if 2GB of RAM will stop me from running Sonoma. Apple gave up on posting system requirements for macOS after moving towards blacklisting old hardware, which is a whole other issue I'm not going to talk about because it's a tired rant for me to talk about planned obsolescence. All right, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to need to do is install a later version of macOS so we can run OpenCore Legacy Patcher. If you ever want to know what is the maximum officially supported macOS on your Mac, everymac.com 
has you covered. Unsurprisingly, the Mac supported operating system is 10.13 High Sierra, so let's get that installed. To do this, I'll create a USB installer for Mac OS High Sierra on this nice 250 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive on a Mac Pro. On Apple's official website, they have an article explaining how to create USB installers for Mac OS. Basically, there's a command line utility inside the installer application that will format a targeted volume and copy over the necessary files that we can run from the terminal. First, I'll type in sudo for super dope. I lied, it's super user, which is declaring a min privileges. And then we're going to locate the installer path and drag it into the terminal to get that path. I realized while editing this, I didn't make this abundantly clear, but you're right clicking into the application folder, then going into content, then resources, and it's create installer media. And that is the application that you're dragging into the window. Then we need to add the dash dash volume flag to kindly ask the OS to target and nuke and copy over the files to a specific location. Again, I'm going to use the shortcut of dragging a location into the terminal so I can get its path. In this case, it's the entire volume. I'm not even sure I have enough RAM to run even High Sierra, but we're going to YOLO this. Or wait, we probably should update our slang. Let's go to the internet and find out what the kids are saying. D-I-F-T-P. Do it for the plot? <laughs> This is bullshit. This is why I get for reading the New York Post. I'm sorry. Usually when you watch those Gen Alpha videos, it's always something like no cap, the Skibbity Mac Mini has low key, low aura, and I'm finna to do a glow up so it can be Sigma. It's not D-I-F-T-P. Kids are not saying that. So let's find something better. Okay, according to the ladbible.com, it's f**k it we ball. I can at least get behind that one. Plug in the USB drive and f**k it we ball, we're going to boot off this drive. I'm not even sure what I'm doing right now. This is not in the script, but I like the phrase, so I'm going to keep using it. Not too surprising, but it booted off the USB installer just fine, so I'm going to reformat the drive, then install macOS. Clearly, Apple doesn't have any requirement flags, and that's surprising, but hey, if you want to install High Sierra with 2GB of RAM, Apple will let you experience pain. I really miss this era of Apple. After installing, it booted High Sierra just fine, and it's running. Running might have not been the word. It was more like it's walking at this point. It's going very slow. This is pretty fantastic. I mean, it's horrible, but it is amazing that it runs. Color me impressed. Next, let's get Firefox ESR and install it as old Safari can have issues with GitHub. GitHub is where OLCP is downloaded from. I could save myself the time and just do this on another computer, but I kind of want to experience 2GB of RAM in High Sierra. Since this is an edited down video, I'm largely cutting out a lot of the hitching and pausing and slowness here. But let me ramble for a minute so I can fill the space while we wait for Firefox to launch the first time. I'm really curious how much of this is actually the RAM and not just the hard drive and CPU. This is not a high spec computer from 2010. Most of my audience already knows, but the Mac Pros from the same year were just ridiculously better than this thing. All right, I think I've made my point. It takes a long time for it to verify and then Soon, you'll have to wait again for the launch, although not nearly as long. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm only pulling this stunt once. You get the idea, it's slow. Moving on. I'm going to go ahead and install Ghostry just to block JavaScript trackers, as those are memory hogs. I have the activity monitor open so I can watch the RAM usage. Now it's time to go to the OCLP website and grab OpenCore Legacy Patcher. You can just feel that this needs more RAM, but it is working. And you just know someone ran High Sierra with only two gigabytes of RAM without knowing better. To really put this in perspective, my Power Mac G4 has two gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to skip ahead because there's no reason to torture you, the viewer, with how slow this is being. It's slow, but it's not mind-bogglingly slow. Okay, Open Core Legacy Patcher runs, and I'm able to install it. Now I just need to reboot and test that it works. It works. All right, now to create the USB installer. Okay, so it's taking a while on this computer, so I'm just going to do this on my Mac Pro because it has faster USB. I'm on my Mac Pro, and now to make the USB installer. Now this is stupid. I'm trying to make the USB installer, and it's failing. Oh, uh, okay, the download goofed. Let's try re-downloading Sonoma and making the installer again using OCLP. Yep, we're all good now. It was just a bad download. The USB installer has been successfully created, so now we can say fuck it, we ball. Boot the Mac Mini, and of course, we see the USB installer, so we'll launch it. Mac OS 14 is a bust. I tried booting off the installer multiple times, and even leaving it for a few hours, it just would not boot. 
Uh, I guess that's not too surprising. I have Monterey downloaded. I'm going to go through the process of creating an installer. So Monterey is a bit more compatible with a lot of legacy hardware as a lot of the legacy drivers were not removed from it. So I'm going to skip Ventura and just try Monterey. All right, the Monterey installer just booted. It's very slow, but it booted and I'm going to try installing. It rebooted, but it's now hanging at the second stage of the install. This isn't that uncommon with open core. I've had this happen before and generally you can just reboot and I'll pick up where it left off. I tried rebooting and starting anew again and just left it overnight and it didn't work. The nice thing about mechanical hard drives is you can hear when they're operating and I didn't hear anything happening. All right, I'm not giving up. We're gonna try Big Sur now. Make the USB installer, plug the Ghibli into the hole, run the installer and fuck it, we ball. Okay, this is better because it's installing and rebooting. Installing and rebooting, installing and rebooting, installing and rebooting. All aboard the struggle bus, destination Big Sur. I'll be your very slow driver and maybe we'll reach our destination. I don't know yet. Part of me just wants to leave like five minutes of dead air while this thing spins its wheels so you can experience the same level of pain I'm experiencing right now. But I promise I wasn't going to pull any more stunts and make you wait. Each time it hangs, I wonder if it's going to move to the next screen and just about when I'm giving up hope, it continues. This is really rugged. The struggle bus's new destination, the beach, because we're beach balling all day. Okay, no joke, it's been about a half an hour now, but I've managed to create a user account and it looks like it's about to launch. Okay, so it just returned from a black screen and I just got the login screen. I think it's going to work. Right, this is a time lapse of five minutes of footage. I think it has so little RAM that it's struggling to load in the desktop background, but eventually it loads. Moment of truth, I'm going to go to about this Mac. Okay, time for another time lapse. This time it takes a minute and a half. This is for reels working, so I'm gonna to go to the activity monitor. The memory pressure is in the green. What's surprising is there's not that much swap being used. These are memory page outs written to disk. I'm guessing if I even jump to a SATA SSD, the speeds would vastly improve as the hard drives on these old Mac minis are really slow. I do have an entire video explaining macOS memory management if you're curious. Now for the moment of truth, we're going to use Safari. I'm going to launch Safari, but while it's launching, just notice that the activity monitor still hasn't listed any of the processes. The wired memory is incredibly low at 800 megabytes, but that's still almost half the memory. I was curious, so I checked the activity monitor in my Mac Pro 2019, and it's using 10 gigabytes of wired memory. This is neither here nor there, but this is the portion of RAM that is reserved for the operating system and its critical processes and can't be swapped out. What this says is there's quite a bit of dynamic and preemptive memory allocation, and that Apple really should ship computers with more than 8 gigabytes of RAM. The dead horse is still dead, so we're moving on. After a minute and a half, Safari finally launched. Launched does not equal usable, so it took another 30 seconds or so before I could punch in a URL. Then it took about a minute and a half to load google.com. But it loaded it, and it's working. With google.com loaded, I decided to search my own personal blog and see how long it would take to load. My blog is exceptionally lightweight as far as websites go, but the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide is pretty long. It's about 60,000 words or so. It took about two minutes to load the blog post. Scrolling on this brought back iPhone 3G memories as it reminded me of the checkerboard pattern you'd see when you scrolled too fast. This isn't exactly the same, but it does take a few seconds for it to catch up and render the page. For pretty much my final test, I decided to try and play one of my inline videos embedded. As expected, this proved to be quite the challenge. It basically froze and hung for a solid minute and a half. I did manage to get the player to go full screen and I was able to get it to buffer, then play, but then it would pause and then it'd jump ahead and do the same again. Eventually I just gave up and quit Safari and you can see my memory pressure hit the red, which is not surprising at all. So yeah, I don't think there's really much that needs to be summarized here. Big Sur is bootable with only two gigabytes of RAM, but it is effectively unusable. It also seems like you can't run any OS above Big Sur with only two gigabytes of RAM. The most important thing to take away from this video is... We can stop saying the phrase YOLO. We have fuck it we ball and that's way better and Drake should also retire. And I know this is getting off topic. 
just like how I have a habit of inserting craft beer and hiking into my videos. Just be really glad that I don't start talking about college football and just alienating what few viewers I actually have. I'm definitely doing a follow-up video when I get the 16 gigabytes of RAM and I'll probably yank out the optical drive and drop in the SSD and try again with Sonoma and possibly even go for Sequoia. It'll be interesting as I barely use OpenCore Legacy Patcher with a GPU that doesn't support metal. If there's anything interesting I should be doing with this Mac Mini, please let me know. As always, I want to thank my Patreons. These guys are legends. Thanks.